You talked earlier about having this dream of playing for Barcelona, and it did turn out to be a nightmare. And probably the main reason for that was the breakdown in your relationship with the manager, Pep Guardiola, who right now many would say is the best coach in the world. You had a very different experience with him. Uh, you called him a coward with no balls. Uh, you said, when you buy me, you're buying a Ferrari. If you drive a Ferrari, you put premium petrol in the tank. You hit the motorway and you step on the gas. Guardiola filled up with diesel and took a spin in the countryside. He should have bought a Fiat. I think Guardiola is an amazing coach. When I was there, the coaching was different compared to what I had before. It's totally on a different level. Mm -hmm. That's why he's successful. Because if you see on his career, if you take the last 15, 10 to 15 years, the guy never came third place. Mm -hmm. He's always first or second. So the coach is amazing. And, uh, but I had a different situation with him because I had the coach and I get to meet the person. And we, it became a problem, a problem I, I was not aware of because I solved my problems. I look in the eyes, doesn't mean I have to like you or dislike you. We will solve it. And it takes one second to solve it. We go straight and we solve it. But solve a problem, if the problem is between two persons, it takes two to, to solve it. And especially when the other side doesn't know. And I remember when I was there, I was like, because before I came to Barcelona, always media have their input and saying, they would go like, you don't fit in here. You don't fit in the culture. It's different, different because who I was. And my mistake was there, I tried to fit in instead of being who I am. Mm. Because I think it's important, like I begin the interview, being who you are is being perfect. But there I tried to be somebody I was not. And I said to him, listen, if I have too big nose for you, you tell me. If I walk strange, you tell me. If I'm not good enough, you tell me. If you don't like whatever I do, you tell me. I resolve the problem. I leave. I'm not here to disturb. I'm not, I'm not here to create. I'm just here to fu fulfill my dream. And, uh, and I didn't hear nothing about it. The, the thing was, it kept, kept, first six months was okay. Everything was good. No, but the strange thing, the first meeting I had with him was like, remember, players here don't come with Ferrari, Porsche and that. Then it, it felt like, why? He was already judging. But why? You call me every day to bring me here and then you want to send this message to me. Don't worry, I will not bring my car. And I didn't bring it. I didn't bring it for six, seven, eight months. And then I started to... The directors, because I... I would perform bad and the, the people above him would complain, but they said, we cannot engage if you don't open the door. So I would have to go to him and say, listen, what's going on? So I create a situation so the people above him could interfere because they could not interfere if there was nothing. And I went to him, listen, can I talk? A friendly talk, eh? like simple. Even I wrote it in the, in the book. I say, I said to him, listen, I'm not doing good. I think with the situation with Messi, putting him, I need more space. You brought me in, so I need my space to do my thing. Because the way you want me to play now is not, I'm not good enough. Then better you put the other players. So I was direct and open. And we spoke normal, uh, normal conversation because I never had a problem with a coach in a professional way. So the case with him was the first time I had I had not discussions because we didn't even come there. Like a problem without knowing the problem. And he said in the end, which was cool, don't worry, I take care of this. I was like, okay, cool, everything is done. Next game, I know I'm on the bench. I said, okay, no problem. <laughs> and I'm not the type that would go to the coach, why am, I not play why am I not playing? You should play me. Because remember, I come from hard work. Mm. You get what you work for. So for me, working hard, I would get and not, I need to play, I want to play. Mm. Because it's not how I get my, my, my proof of playing. Because mm. I prefer you hate me, but I play, then I know why I play, because I'm good. Second game, bench. Third game, bench. I said, okay, and now I'm getting pumped up because obviously I need to do more to show myself. But I noticed it was not about me performing anymore, it was, I think, my opinion, he felt offended for me saying to him mm -hmm. I needed more space in the way I wanted to, to play.
he's punishing. Which is him. okay. Yeah. Which is okay. He's the coach. Bad results. He leaves. Player stays. And I respect that. But be open to me. Mm. Be direct to me so we understand each other. Fourth game bench and then I started to make noise because it's not okay for me anymore. Now I'm on the bench and I have on the, I'm on the bench because of a situation I created not by my own uh, how do you say by my own choice mm. because of the people above him because for them I was a big investment. And the fourth game I bring my Ferrari and I bring the Enzo Ferrari and I knew it will create another situation. So I parked the car in front of his office. So you f with me, I f with you. That was my motto. You parked it in front of his office. In front of his office, <laughs> I said, this is, you want to play with fire, I will bring you fire, but I will burn you. But obviously he's the coach because what punish most the players, player if he doesn't play, mm -hmm. because obviously you want to play, but the boss is the coach. But in that moment, I understood this will not be okay because there is How something. did he re react to you parking your Ferrari outside? He would not say nothing to me because he would avoid me. But then they came up. The big... strange thing is, I would go in, a, in the breakfast. We have a breakfast area where both of us would come. I go in, he would go up and go out of the room. On the field, he would never connect with me like this because you can connect by passing each other, then you start to talk without looking for it because I can pass you on the street. Oh, what's up, person? Everything okay? Mm -hmm. You know, you understand. So we would go against each other. He would take a whole round and go around me. And then I noticed something was more than just the player because it was too strange. Is that why you use the phrase coward but no balls? Yeah, because he would not confront his whatever problem he had. And he would use his right guy to resolve uh, his problem and probably he would say now I don't talk about it and is him still have it in the head him still talking about it when this will come out but you give me the question and I answer your question so it's okay. not me still think about it no, it's me only answering it, it so, came to a head uh, as a dressing room incident after Barca lost to Inter uh, and it's alleged that you threw a training kit box across the room yeah at Guardia. is that true versus him yeah did you hit him no, he didn't hit. How, did how did he react? But it was a message. No, he stepped out of the locker room. He would not confront me. He would not confront me. Like I see him, because I follow football, I see him in the press conferences now and that, saying his thing. This didn't happen here. So maybe become bigger man now. Have I you spoken know. to him since you left? No, no. We met, we met uh, when I was in United. He was obviously in City. So you, you pass the players, but I would not see him there. And this is not me looking for him or something, because for me it's the past. Mm. Because what happened, happened. You cannot go back and change. You grow from that, you become different from that, you get experience from that. But what I know, his, his closest friend would stay out, of the, out in the hall and wait for me to pass. And when I pass, he would come out. And the funny thing is, if I would see him, nothing would happen. Mm. Because for me, I'm a man. I take it as a man. If I have a problem, I resolve it. If he's watching this interview, what would you say? He would you? say, I still think about it. Still, no, I, what am, would you say? I am crying. No, I think he's an amazing coach. Don't get me wrong. I think he's an amazing coach. What he's doing, he changed the game mm. 100%. He's been very successful. But as a man? As a man, I see him do some press conference. I see him has been stepping up, so he's not, he's not the one I know. I mean, that I mm. met, so I'm happy for him. I mean, remember, we shared the same dream. We work, I was a professional player, he was a professional player, so I don't want any harm for him. Dislike or like, still we, we, we share the same dream. You cannot hate a person because of the situation like that. He thinks about him, I think about me. So, like I said, he's a coach, I'm a player. So, I think about me, he think about him. He has his responsibility, I have mine. The difference is, I resolve my problem, if I have a problem. Mm. So, if he would say to me, listen, your nose is too big. Listen, it's the last time we meet. You're not happy, I go, I resolve it. I didn't know, that's my, still mm. until today, I don't know what, what the problem was. You think he should have the courage to tell you? No, he shouldn't. He should run away. 